Hello, this is Zach with Go Engineer. SOLIDWORKS has recently changed the layout of their video card testing site, so this video will be a brief overview of what to expect when searching for a certified graphics card driver. First, let's open SOLIDWORKS RX. This can be found in the Windows Start menu under the SOLIDWORKS Tools folder, or you can click the Home tab on the SOLIDWORKS Task pane, and under SOLIDWORKS Tools, click SOLIDWORKS RX. Once SOLIDWORKS RX is open, we will choose the Diagnostic tab. And at the top, it will give you your system manufacturer, system model, card manufacturer, card model, and give you some diagnostic results. You can see that I have a Dell Precision 7510, and I have an NVIDIA Quattro M2000 graphics card. Now below this information is a link to a website where we will download the certified driver. Now there is a download latest driver button here, but I'm telling you up front, it rarely works, so it's best to just click the link. Now, if you're familiar with the old layout of this site, you can see that the same information is there, it's just basically an updated look. We still have pull downs for SOLIDWORKS version, system vendor, system model, and graphics card. Now if you are unsure about your specific hardware, just remember this information is located at the top of the diagnostic page in SOLIDWORKS RX. And if there is no information found on your machine, don't worry, just take note of the graphics card make and model. For SOLIDWORKS version, I'm going to choose 2019 since that is what I have installed. For system vendor, I will choose Dell. For system model, the 7510 is not in the list, so I will just keep it at all system models. For graphics card, I will choose my Quattro M2000. Now below the pull downs is a list of available certified drivers for the NVIDIA M2000. In my case, I do not see the Dell Precision 7510 in the results list, but the driver for the Precision Tower 3620 would be the same as the one listed for my machine. Now in the old layout, you would click the driver number and it would automatically begin downloading that driver. However, now in most cases, it will direct you to the manufacturer website where you'll have to fill out this information again. And here lies the major difference from the previous method and the reason for this video. So before I click the link, I'll just take a mental note that the recommended driver version for my graphics card is R440. I'm gonna go ahead and click the link. And as you can see, it has redirected me to the NVIDIA website where I will have to fill out this information again. Now, in some cases, the correct make and model will be preset in the pull downs, though this isn't always the case, so keep your eye out for that. So for the product pull down, I'm going to choose Quattro for product series, Quattro series for product, I'm going to choose Quattro M2000. For operating system, I'm going to keep it at Windows 10, 64-bit. Now for Windows driver type, you have two choices. You have standard or DCH. If you're not sure which one you need to install, then you can find this out from the NVIDIA control panel. To access the NVIDIA control panel, you can right click on your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel. In the lower left hand corner, click system information. And from the system information dialog, you can see that driver type is listed at standard. So I'm going to leave mine set to standard and for recommended slash beta, I'm going to choose recommended certified and click search. Now here's where it can get confusing. As mentioned earlier, SOLIDWORKS used to just supply the download and the list of drivers for each graphics card was pretty short. And here we have a long list of drivers, so it can be confusing which one to use. Now, if you recall, the SOLIDWORKS website said that for my graphics card, Quattro M2000, the certified driver was an R440. Now that does narrow it down a bit, but there are at least six possible drivers listed as R440. However, since this driver is certified, any driver listed as R440 is safe to use. But if you are still not sure which one to choose, it's usually safe to go with the latest version. And it looks like the latest one was released in February 27, 2020. So this is the one that I will choose. To start the download, I will click on the corresponding name of the driver left to the date. And this will take us to the download page where we have a green download button at the top. 
The next page is an opt-in email for notifications. Now you can skip this by clicking the link under the submit button. And the next page is to agree and download. If you're familiar with installing a video card driver, then you can stop the video now. However, I'm going to go ahead and continue the steps for this process. Once the driver is through downloading, you should see it on the lower left hand portion of your browser. If your browser does not do this, then you can usually find the download in your downloads folder. I will go ahead and click the driver exe to start the installation and click OK to the defaulted path. Once you click OK, it will start saving files to the location and the installation will start. The next thing that comes up is the NVIDIA installer where it will do a system check for compatibility. And when that's done, you will click agree and continue. And the next page is whether you want to do an express install or a custom install. And most of the time you're gonna choose an express install because it's just updating the driver that's currently there and it keeps your current NVIDIA settings. However, if you want to do a clean install, you wanna choose custom, hit next, and click the checkbox to perform a clean install. Now keep in mind this does restore all of your NVIDIA settings to default values and removes any profiles that you have created. So only do this if you're having trouble with your previous driver. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. The next thing that happens is preparing for install where it will continue and finish the installation. At the end you may be prompted to restart your computer. However, if not, it's a good idea to go ahead and restart your computer after any software install. Now that does conclude this video. I hope it was informative to you and thank you for watching.